hi good morning everyone how you doing today um sorry the video is coming later than it, it usually does I'll, I'll do my best to make sure that i stick to um, monday mornings i do apologies for that um so today is going to be a little bit different because i really want to speak to an ongoing issue that has been going on for a very long time in, in the body of christ and i feel like it's time for the body of Christ to actually stand up and do something about it. Because if we continue to sit on, on, on our hands and hope that things will get better, and also if we continue to um, bicker, if, I don't know if that has, that's the right word, or complain, or even malign, and call out which in in a very good sense in, 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 a, in a very very large extent is very necessary and scriptural because the bible says that we should expose that which is darkness now it is in this in regard to um the youth's relationship with the church now i know that there's been a lot of t talk about spark nation and what has what, what's going on there now I'm I'm not an authority on this, so I can't tell you that I I have some inside knowledge as to what's going on. Yes, I, I have had concerns because um, I've attended maybe one or two of their um, Bible sessions. In, in you know, um, I wouldn't mention the name of their Bible study connect. And uh, I've attended I've attended one or two of it, and I've met a few of their leaders in that space. But I don't have a connection with them per se, so I'm not going to claim any form of authority here about that church but i i have had concerns about them anointing pastors young pastors um and you know and the only thing i just said to the person that brought it up to me was as long as they are being discipled then that is fine you know that is between them and god as long as they are actually discipling these pastors to do the work of a pastor and they are not just anointing people for the sake of anointing them to keep them in church or whatever the strategy might be. Now, whatever what is what I'm hearing about Spark Nation is very very saddening because of some of the um, fraudulent activities that are going on there and everything like that. But one of the things that stood out to me was a video that I watched yesterday, and that's what made me decide to do this video today. Um, two of the girls that attended that attended that used to attend spark nations young girls one of them said that the reason why she started attending spark nations in 2017 is because our old church did not really speak to her our, our parents our, our, our founding church basically or the church that she grew up in did not basically speak to her and she was not really happy as to um, the church relationship with the youth. Now, this is me paraphrasing what she had said. Basically, she didn't feel that the, the, the church was empowering the youth enough or accepting of the youth. Now, this is where my own challenge to the church is. And this is not a specific church. This is church in the, in the, general, the general body of Christ. We need to start asking ourselves critical questions. One of the critical questions we need to start asking ourselves is that, and, and I'm actually posing this challenge to the church, is that a spark nation would not have existed if the church was doing what they were supposed to do. If the church was taking their place, especially in, in, in the youth ministry space, a spark nation would not have had the chance to exist. Now, if you are not providing the right food for your children the devil will provide it for them that is the that, that 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 is a guarantee and even when you're providing the devil will still try to entice them with a counterfeit and this is what is, and this is what is happening now now whether or not spark nation is doing what they have been accused of doing what you need to know is that there will always be forms of spark nation around even if spark nation for one reason or the other ceases to exist another type of that of that church will arise again that is a guarantee what we need to do is yes call out the evil that is going on call out the wrong that is going on call out, expose darkness but we need to go a step further than that 
and provide an haven where these young people can fellowship with the, in the light. Now, the scripture says about Abraham that God, in um, Genesis chapter 18, God said that why would I hide anything from my friend Abraham, knowing that he's going to teach his generations to come. One of the things, one of the reasons why God reveals mystery to the body of Christ is because that mystery needs to be passed on to the young people. The culture that God gave the children of Israel, when he told them to write the law on your on, on in front of your house, you know, put it everywhere, you know, even almost like wear it on your body. And you know, when you're looking at the Levitical laws and, and the law that was the, in, in Deuteronomy and in Numbers, the reason why God was saying all these things is because he wanted he wanted the law to be so prevalent in in the family. He wanted his word to so to be so prevalent in the family that the children of, of in those families will be able to pick it up. Do you understand what I mean? Satan is going after the youth because he knows that these are the people that will continue the work. If he can pervert them now then Christianity in the future is going to be very, very weak. And this is where we, the church, we need to stand, we need to, we need to, we need to stop complaining about specific churches and actually stand up and do what we are supposed to do for our young people and provide a place for them to actually mature in Christ. If we are not doing that, then more counterfeit options will keep rising up. I know somebody very, very dear to my heart that, and this has nothing to do with Spark Nation, that they've been hurt by another young church. And as a result of that, they've lost their faith in Christ. So we need to understand that whether it is a fraudulent activity that is going on or whether we are holding on to traditions and cultures that are not necessarily driven by biblical values and are now hurting our children, we need to start asking ourselves critical questions as to whether or not our approach is right. And we need to start seeking God in prayer and in fasting to give us the right direction to minister to our young people. Because sometimes, even in most churches, we see the youth ministry as some form of a daycare ministry to engage our youth when the real service is going on. And we need to understand that youth ministry is a church. We need to treat it as a church. We need to give it the ring fencing of a church, the, 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 um, the empowerment of a church. We need to make our young people feel valued. Not used, but valued and invested in. So, I just want you to... I, 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 today, I'm not going to pray for you. I want, you to, I want us to pray together. I'm not going to agree with you in prayer. And, and for your own specific circumstance, as we usually do on, on this video. And, and I'm sorry that it's longer than it should be, or it's longer than usual. But I think that this is something that we just need to address very, very quickly. Because it's good that God is doing things in our own life and we can testify. But it's so that we can strengthen each other. That is what prophecy is. You know, prophecy is to strengthen, to comfort, and to exhort. And when we testify, we are actually prophesying to each other because we are, we, are, we are speaking to the goodness of God. And there's no point of us speaking to the goodness of God if we are not creating platform for our children who are going to carry on the legacy to heal and to grow. So today, I just want us to agree together in prayer concerning every young person that has been hurt by church. That has been hurt as a result of their experience in church and have lost their faith or are about to lose their faith or are questioning their relationship with god i just want us to agree in prayer this morning that god would heal them and that god will restore them you know concerning those people who have been hurt by spark nation you know who maybe for, for what maybe their credit has now been destroyed as a result of some of these, some of the activities that have been going on, and their faith in God has shipwrecked. I just want us to agree in prayer this morning that God will stretch out his hand of healing and restoration and heal them in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that we stand 
in agreement, O oh God, together as a body, that Lord, everyone that has been hurt by church, whatever church it is, that Lord Almighty, I pray, that they would have an encounter with you in Jesus, whether it is young people, even parents themselves, that have left church out of offense, out of anger. I pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you would heal their hearts in Jesus' name, that this offense will no longer stand, that you would bring them back into the fold, because the Bible tells us that you left the 99 to seek out the one that was lost. I pray, O oh God, that you will seek them out wherever they are, that you will send forth your word and you would heal them, O oh God, and that you would make them whole in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that you would speak your truth into their heart, that they would not just see one experience as the entirety of their, their relationship with you, but that you would expose the lie and the attempt of Satan to steal them away from you, and that you would establish them in the truth, O oh God. I just pray, O oh God, that you would heal your people in Jesus' name. Bring them back to your fold, O oh God. Amen. I just want to also encourage you this morning. The Bible says that, that those who pray for Jerusalem, or those who seek the prosperity of Jerusalem will prosper. If you seek the prosperity of the church, if you seek the prosperity of the young people to flourish in the church, you would prosper. In your own private life, you would prosper. Whatever you do, God will bless you. This is why God blessed Abraham. Because he was he was concerned about the kingdom of God. You know, he, he, the Bible says that Abraham, even though he was in a comfortable place, he looked forward to a, a city without gates. To the promised land. You know? And that's the same thing. And that's the same mindset we need to have. It's not about Christianity, is not the Bible says that Christianity is not about eating and drinking. You know, it's not it's not about what we can get from God. It's about what God will do through us to the glory of his name. I just want to encourage you to continue to seek and continue to pray for, for, for our, our brothers and our sisters that might be hurt. And I just want to speak to you who may have been hurt. You know, I don't have your experience. You know, I don't have your specific experience. You know what you have gone through. I can't, I can't really I can't really speak more. I can't even tell you that I understand. You know, I'll be lying to you if I say that. But what I want you to know is that even though these people are representations of God, they are still human beings and they are still very flawed people. And what you should not do is allow the weaknesses of others to rob you from the richness of a relationship with God. Don't allow somebody's foolish actions to rob you of your eternity. What they have, what any of these churches or pastors or leaders have done that have has led you to be hurt, they would receive, they would receive their re they would, they would reap their reward. What you should do is not allow them to deviate you from Christ because then you will not have an excuse anymore. So I just want to encourage you this morning. Whatever hurts that you may have felt, please realize that these people are not a reflection of God. This is not who God is. God exists outside of this experience. And this morning, I just want to do some form of an altar call for you this morning to seek God for yourself and know God for yourself. Church, almost everybody has been, I've been hurt by church myself, but I've still stayed in church because I know that God has use of me there. Please, I can encourage you this morning. Don't let other people's actions push you away from your relationship with God. Nobody is worth that that much. Nobody is that important. Amen. So please, I encourage you. And to the pastors, in the book of Matthew, I believe it's chapter 24, the Bible says that, who is that shepherd that when the master left him with the sheep, told him to feed the sheep at the appropriate time, but instead decides to whip that sheep. The Bible says that when the master returns and he finds that shepherd, 
he is going to tear him into pieces. If you continue doing what you're doing, God is going to tear you into pieces. <laughs> you're not going to escape it. The Bible says that who is he who causes one of these little ones to stumble? It would be better if he ties a milestone around his leg and jumps into the sea. That means it is better to be in a hopeless situation than what I am going to do to him. So, pastors, if you are hurting your people, it's time for you to repent. Mm-hmm. And it's time for you to apologize to your church and own up to what you have done. I just pray that just as the awe of God fell upon Shechem, that the awe of God will fall upon this church again. And that the truth of God will be established. And that the water of God will be healed. In Jesus' name, God bless you.